So the Bible says, brethren, he starts back to verse 13, please. I count not myself to have apprehended, to have attained. Now, you need to understand who is speaking here. We're talking about Paul, Paul the great, Paul the exceptional apostle. At this point in his life, theologically speaking, he had attained some height in ministry, excelling. And yet the man says, I count not myself to have apprehended. Then he says, but this one thing I do. So I want us to borrow something from his understanding tonight. He says one thing, but he gives it two expressions. The first dimension of the one thing that he does is forgetting those things which are behind. Forgetting the things which are behind. Forgetting the things which are behind. Notice, he never said forgetting the evil things. He never said forgetting the bad things. Whatever the things are, provided they are behind, he says forgetting them. Are we learning already? In fact, I like the way Isaiah 43 from verse 18 to 19 says, it says, remember ye not the former things, nor consider the things of old. Very potent instruction. Remember ye not the former things. Now, overdwelling, please listen ladies and gentlemen, overdwelling in the past, both negative and positive past has an effect on anyone. There is something about the way God designed the human spirit such that the moment you begin to overdwell in the past, whether positive past or negative past, it sustains an ability to peg you and stop you from going forward. Is someone learning now? So Paul is speaking here and says, brethren, I count myself, regardless whatever results you see, I count myself to not have apprehended, but there is this one thing I do. Number one, I forget the things which are behind. Provided they are behind, I forget them. To forget does not mean to lose memory of. To forget means to not overdwell there. To not give it power over your current condition. Is someone learning now? Now listen very carefully. Overdwelling, I wrote here in the past, both negative and positive can hinder advancement and progress in life. There are many people today who failed, they are failing now simply because they succeeded yesterday. The success of yesterday has refused to allow them make progress today. And there are those who are failing now because they failed yesterday. And they have camped around the failure of yesterday and they are wasting today discussing yesterday. Are we learning now? Now, write this down please. Overdwelling on a negative past creates fear and discouragement overdwelling on a negative past creates fear and discouragement every time you begin to overdwell on yesterday especially a negative yesterday the effect that it has on you is that it can bring fear fear of today fear of tomorrow and discouragement it deflates your passion to be daring it deflates your passion to press Hallelujah. The Bible tells us of a man called Gideon. Gideon was a man who had been destined to be a warrior, a valiant man. But the Bible tells us he was hiding. And when the angel came to him, he said, Oh, thou mighty man of valor. And the man was hiding. He said, Don't insult me. Don't call me that name. If it is true, look what has happened to us. I am the least person, he says. The least person and my father's tribe is also the least. God did not ask him that information. It is out of the abundance of the heart that the mouth speaks. There are many people today who cannot make progress. You are destined to be doing great things in the lives and the destinies of people in ministry, in business. But yesterday has such, listen, yesterday is so jealous. It will never allow you to leave it and get into tomorrow, not without a fight. Yesterday always wants to relieve itself in your today. You must sustain the power to break away from yesterday. Are we together? 
Just because you were Saul yesterday does not mean you must remain Saul forever. Saul can become Paul. Cephas can become Simon. Abraham can become Abraham. Are we together now? This is very important. Paul is saying the reason behind my consistent advancement is that there is one thing that I will not fail to do. I forget the things that are before me. Isn't it amazing that Paul, while he's in prison, you would think he should be regretting the prison. He's busy writing a letter and warning the churches and saying, I'm coming. I hear that some of you are now misbehaving. Just to let you receive this letter first and wait for me. As soon as I come out, if you come out of a prison, will you run away or continue what you are doing? This was a man that the past did not have power over him. You are in prison and you're already informing the people. Tell this guy I heard that he's teaching something else. When I come out, I will meet with you shortly. This is a prisoner telling people. And as soon as he comes out, you will think he will write a letter saying, Do you know what I went through? Mm -mm. Are we together? My first assignment while encouraging you tonight is to destroy these excuses that have always made every new year look like the old one. Say no way. Shout it again. Say no way. No excuses for failure in ministry. No excuses for failure in your life. You are not the first person to be wounded. I regret, with, um, I sympathize with what happened yesterday. But we are tired of hearing yesterday's story. There are people today who will remain failures forever. And they will start telling you stories that happened 10 years ago. Do you know I bought a house and rain destroyed it? Okay, sorry. But yesterday is too far. 10 years ago. This one thing I do, forgetting the things that are behind. So dwelling in a negative past. And you see, Satan understands the power of the mind. He will manipulate your thinking into believing you cannot become because of what you were yesterday. So when God is saying, I want to make a mighty prophet out of you, Satan will use your mind to mock you and say, you, is it that God lacked men? What is God going to do with a vessel like you? Is someone learning already? There are many people seated, some of you watching me now. If you had been able to sustain the power to conquer yesterday, you would have been blessing the nations now. In business, in life, you've been in Lagos, but you've been in your yesterday, always complaining. Why is your January like this? You know, I told you that this, my destiny helper just died last year. Okay, I understand. And I'm not being sarcastic. It's all right. He's been buried. Jesus is still alive. Are we together? Oh, I was raped when I was a child. I sympathize with you. I don't throw away your pain. But you have to get past that realm. Are we together? Someone told me yes, and he said no again. All right, that's all. I mean, get out of those things. Shake yesterday and say goodbye. Goodbye once and for all. Once and for all, in the name of Jesus. Goodbye to the tears. Goodbye to the shame. Goodbye to the mockery. Perhaps before you got born again, you lived a wayward life. Now you are saved. There is a big difference between being an unbeliever and a believer. It's a spiritual reality, whether your mind has agreed with it or not. The Bible says, if any man be in Christ Jesus, he's a new creation. It's the assignment of the world to bring your mind into the experience that has been furnished in your spirit. This one thing I do, is someone learning now? Dwelling on a negative past can destroy you. And I'm here by the Spirit of God to tell someone God still is looking, God is still looking for you. He still wants you. That preacher is still in you. That businessman is still in you. That prophet is still in you. Forget about the naysayers. They didn't create you. They will not be there when you make it. Are we together now? Remember ye not the former things, nor consider the things of old. Remember ye not the former things, nor consider the things of old. I failed yesterday. I applied for a job and no one gave me a job. Can I tell you, today is the gift that God gives men to correct yesterday's tragedy. Every time you wake up and you see that it's a new day, that new day is a message from God. There is still hope for a tree. Is someone learning now? 
now over dwelling on a positive past i need to balance it over dwelling on yesterday's success yesterday's results ministerially in business in career and so on and so forth it brings pride it brings overconfidence and it brings indiscipline listen carefully you can so succeed that you stop obeying the principles that brought you there because you believe that you are too great to fail this is the mistake of great people so you have a lot of balloon success people are up today and down tomorrow over dwelling on a positive past creates pride over confidence and indiscipline pride over confidence and indiscipline is someone learning now so paul says this one thing i do whether they are scars or crowns provided they are in my yesterday i make sure they do not have an effect on me because there is something before me you can never focus on the future until you do something with what is past thank god for 2023 thank god for the house you built thank god for the business trite thank god for the ministerial exploit thank god you had a child thank god you got married thank god you relocated but 2023 is gone rejoice over what god did but do not overdwell there that house can be in your mind and stop the estate from coming are we together yes many of us listen this is a revelation that god gave me many years ago and i submit to you it's a principle that still governs my life no matter how great god does whatever he does through my life once i am done with that meeting and that program i kneel down and say father to you be the glory that's the end of it how was the conference great glory be to god what is the next agenda in front Do you believe what I'm teaching you? Yes. There are some of you, the moment you step in in the midst of people, you are always telling them stories of yesteryears. As you look at me like this, don't, don't worry, oh, there are many things. There's a story I will tell you. In 1997, do you know this one happened? I saved 500 people in one meeting. 1997, what is today's date? You must refuse to allow your crowns be so heavy on your head that they stop you from flying. No, don't, don't refuse to allow it. That you gather a lot of accolades that you cannot move forward. No, let me tell you the truth. It is a dangerous thing to once be great and then you are still alive. That in your lifetime, you watch the glory of God rise and fade back in your life. That people look at you and say, this man was once anointed, once great, once powerful, once influential. In the name of Jesus, the son of the living God. Let me speak over someone here. Whatever will make that word, Ichabod, happen in your life. That they will say you once were great, once were anointed, once were prayerful, once were disciplined. I curse it right now. I curse it right now in the name of Jesus. For the Bible says the path of the just. Is that in your Bible? It says it's as a shining light that shineth more and more. More and more is the preordination for every believer. It is in our destiny to experience more and more. Hallelujah. Reminds me of the story of Eli and his sons. Consistent compromise brought them to a point where the Bible says they went to battle with the ark of God and now the ark had been captured and then his son Hophni and Phinehas, they were killed. And when they returned, they came and told the old Eli. They said, listen, three things have happened that are dangerous. Number one, the nation of Israel has been defeated in battle. Number two, your sons Hophni and Phinehas have all been killed. But number three, the ark of God, the symbol of your priesthood has been taken away. The Bible says the moment they said that, Eli fell backward, he hit his head and died. And the wife, the daughter-in-law, when she heard that, she got into labor immediately. 
And when she gave birth, she named the child Ichabod. He says, the glory has departed from Israel. They say, you will leave. She said, no, she gave birth and she also died. Everything that will make your life a warning to others. That people will use your life to warn themselves, warn their children, warn other pastors. Here at this Gaining Momentum Conference, may it die from your life forever. Shout a louder amen. May it die forever. There are people who were prayerful until they became anointed. Now, whether you pray or not, because when you teach things work, ah, the deception of great people. See, there are three temptations that Satan brought before Jesus. That's not my discussion tonight, but it's important that I address this. There are three temptations that Satan brought before Jesus. And every one of us will go through these three levels. The first temptation is turn stone to bread. Compromise of the use of power. Use it for your personal gain. Power has been given unto you, but you can turn that stone to become bread and use it to satisfy your hunger. Why will you be hungry and have the power to make bread? Because his life was governed by the will of God, not his desire. It is as the father wants, not as his belly wants. And Jesus said, no, the economy of the kingdom is built such that the true believer's life revolves around the will of God, not his desire. Are we together? Turn this stone to bread. I can manipulate ministry and use it for my own gain. But he says, no, the life of a believer, one who has been cultured by God, is thy will be done. Temptation number one. The second temptation that all great people go through is the temptation of carelessness at the point of spirituality. That was the second temptation. He took Jesus to a holy, the mountain of, I mean, on top of the temple. And here's what he told him, fall down. You cannot fall down when you're on the ground. You can only fall down when you're at the top. He says, fall down intentionally. After all, there is an immunity that comes with you it is written he shall keep his angels charge over you they shall bear you up on their wings lest you dash your feet against the stone who is quoting that scripture satan and jesus rebuked him every time you rise to the top that is always a temptation fall down there will be angels holding you and the third temptation had to do with influence and power. He took him into an exceeding high mountain. The Bible says he showed him the kingdoms and the glories of the world. He says, all this has been given to me. You just bow down. If this is the key you want to collect. Bow down. Why go through Calvary? Why go through the cross? You just bow to me. I don't need it. What I need is the loyalty and allegiance. You bow down. Since you are the express image of the invisible God. That would be God bowing to me. So you bow down and I can give you the key. Is someone learning now? This is very important. Every time you begin to make it, you need more prayers than those who are not making it. Did you hear what I said? The one who is succeeding needs more prayer than the ones who are failing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And one of the ways that great people stay focused is that they do not overdwell on crowns and trophies. Once you give Jesus praise, enjoy the success, and tap yourself at the back, that is enough. And the next thing you keep moving. Is someone learning now? So congratulations for the many things that happened in 2023. I salute you for taking advantage of the word that has come from your pastor. I salute you for your diligence in hearing and listening. Now the word produced for you. But make sure you do not dwell. God still has great things for you this year. But you must be able to forget the things that are behind. Paul says, brethren, now you understand the scripture. I count myself to not have apprehended, but this one thing I do. He says, I forget the things which are behind. What are the things? I forget the miracles that I performed yesterday. I forget the prisons and the whips that I collected. I, I forget whatever it is. My encounters with Jesus, I preserve the experience for my growth. 
but I stop over dwelling there someone prophesy to yourself say it's time to go forward say it again it's time to go forward that means you will stop over dwelling on the success of yesterday and the failure of yesterday both success and failure can achieve the same thing in your life they can destroy if Satan tries to use failure to destroy you and it does not work he will use results the most important thing is that you are destroyed are we together too much salt can kill too much sugar can kill any one of them as far as Satan is concerned is that you eventually die from one you get the example I'm trying to bring when he uses failure and you refuse to be discouraged he will allow you progress then he will meet you at the gate of the great and come with another kind of temptation and say why pray again you are a great man of God already why give again you're already a millionaire you are not struggling if you didn't have money I can understand why you are giving and sowing but now you've made it will a demon come and remove your money from your account Satan for you and you see the things you will not believe now by the time you make it to certain degrees you will believe it are we together I count myself to not have apprehended I forget the things which are behind then he now says I reach forth to those things which are before someone say before 